Hey, welcome everybody. Chris Petrie here again. Thanks so much for coming by. We have a really fun, exciting cowboy painting we're going to do right now. It's a figure painting. Um, let's enjoy ourselves. We'll have fun. We'll go through the whole process from start to finish, how we're going to create this beautiful uh, composition. Um, I always mention too in my videos um, that, uh, you know, we're all on the uh, journey of watercolor painting. We're learning as we go. And the thing is, if you just stick with it every week, we do a new painting. If you're just sticking with one or two paintings a week and you're learning the processes and the methods and the techniques we're using here on my channel, you will absolutely get the hang of it. There's no question about it. It's nothing like rocket science. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing is you really have to stick it out and, and try to get at least like an hour uh, every week working with us on our YouTube videos here, our tutorials to get the swing of things. Now, especially with figure painting, it's like a whole new challenge too. So if you're used to maybe kind of saying, ah, I'm not going to do it, the figure painting when Chris does them, I'm just going to stick with landscapes, boats, beach scenes, so forth, you know, flowers. Trust me, the figure painting is the same way as the flowers, the beach scenes, the landscapes and city scenes. As long as you're working on them on a consistent basis, you will learn it. It, it won't be, it's like, again, it's not extremely difficult. It's just, you got to basically stick it out and just learn the fundamentals as you go. And trust me, you will learn them. So in any case, with this video here, we're just focusing in on this cowboy painting and we're going to go over the colors we're going to use, how we're going to do it. Basically the same methods and techniques we always use. We're going to preliminary sketch everything so we get everything scaled correctly and within our um, rectangle correctly. Once we have that, then we put our colors into our palette, pre set up all of our colors so that we have pretty much the basics we're going to start with and then we just work from there and continue on and we get our darks first and then we slowly work into our medium mid-tones and we're leaving some white paper for the light for the uh, sunlight in this picture so you'll find that you can do this you can work on it maybe you're going to have a few things that uh, you're going to have a struggle with especially if you're just starting out with figure painting no big deals so, you know uh, you know applaud your own success if you did a great uh, area or two of this painting and if other things go wrong don't worry about it just get it started work all the way through it get it done to the final completion and then you can step back and say okay um you know i, I did great at the vest and the hat and the boots but my chair didn't come out too good or my hands didn't come out good or maybe i had a problem with the um maybe the face the eyes didn't come out so great whatever it is don't worry about it. Celebrate the areas that came out great with your painting and just try to follow it through from start to finish. And that's all really it is. So I'll be talking about other things too on this video. Just a little quick note. Um, I will be uh, creating a Patreon site where some of you that want to see more figure work and work on portraits and figure work, you can come to Patreon. It'll be just a minimal fee, a minimal amount of money per month, maybe let's say just like a one-time monthly um, payment you can make. It's like a, a gift to me that I'm doing some portrait work, extra work beyond my normal YouTube videos. So I'm going to create on Patreon some videos, maybe two or three a month of figure painting. And it'll just be like an extra smaller group of people of us together that are looking to really get a better grip on the figure and portrait work and doing the human form with watercolor painting. And so, you know, I realize not everyone's going to want to join that, but some of you that are really interested in the figure work, um, you'll be really have a lot of fun with this. We're going to actually do our own little small private group on uh, Patreon um, and we'll work on figure work every couple of weeks, maybe once a week, maybe once one or two or maybe three videos a month. We'll have it set up so that we uh, get together and maybe we might even do a, a live video on YouTube. I'll do a live video for open open questions. So maybe you guys can just talk to me live online on a live video on YouTube, but that'll be just for our Patreon um, subscribers. Um, and, uh, it'll just work out really good, I think, because, uh, you know, figure painting is a little more technical and maybe a lot of people aren't up to that speed yet of doing the, uh, fancy, you know, more detailed, uh, paintings of doing figures and, and portrait work. And I understand that. So let's get right into the painting and get started. Maybe I'll just zoom in here so we can kind of see, maybe I'll just move this out of the way and we'll just zoom in on the picture, the cowboy picture here, just in the start. So you can kind of see what we accomplished. And maybe you can even use this as your, you can maybe do a screen capture of this. I'll zoom back a little bit. A screen capture of this maybe might work out good so you have it for, um,
and he's holding some cards. He's got a gun in his hand. He's But I think this came out good. We got lots of beautiful light, sunlight coming across the scene. Um, good color, tonal values look good. Overall, we had a fun time doing this. So we'll get started in just a second. And uh, thanks again for coming by and watching my videos on YouTube here. And um, we'll see you uh, in just a second. We'll start doing a contour drawing of this cowboy and then we'll uh, explain everything step by step and all details uh, so we can accomplish this composition. We just saw the finished painting, everybody. We're getting excited. We're going to do some figure work. We're going to do a cowboy. Um, everyone likes cowboys. You know, the, those fun Western movies we used to watch on TV when we were children. So we're going to actually uh, get started with that. And um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our a preliminary sketch on our paper. So I'm going to just make a, uh, a border around here. So this is the rectangle we're going to be working with in here. And um, so I'll just we'll get that established there. So we'll put our rectangle in with our pencil. And then we kind of just realize that everything we do is going to be within this pencil line here. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll relate everything that we do to our borders and then also our hash marks. We're going to do some hash marks around our painting uh, as we get started. And uh, so... <clears throat> This is uh, a great way to uh, practice uh, your skills with uh, drawing the human form with the figure, clothed figures, nude figures, portrait work. Uh, it's all about maybe contemplating, stepping back for a second and thinking, let me scale things according to what I have in front of me. Um, all pretty much if you'll go to a studio and you'll draw from a, a live figure, um, usually all artists will kind of work in the same fashion. You'll find a seat, a chair, um, you'll sit in front of the model, and then you'll just basically take the model and use the model, usually the head, the head of the model you start with, and you use that as your frame of reference. So you hold your, your pencil out, at, uh, you, you keep your arm straight out in front of you. So if you can imagine my arm is completely straight, my elbow is straight, and I hold my pencil out in front of me like this, and then I place my the top of my pencil visually over the top of the model's head who might be sitting 10 15 feet away from me or five feet depends so you just take your pencil and then you get the you get you take the top of the pencil you put it on the top of the model's head in front of you as you're looking at it as you're looking at your pencil and the model and then you put your thumb where the chin is of your model and then right there you have the size of the head of your model with your pencil then you can come down to your paper and then use that same scale. And then you draw the head according to the size of your model that's sitting or posing. And then you go from there. Or let's say you want to adjust your scale. You would just simply start out with a head in your picture. Start out with a head in your picture, whatever size you want to make the head in your, in your painting. Then you go and you check out the model or even a photograph you can use. You can put up a pencil and hold it to a photograph. We'll actually go over this in just a second. So this is a lot to take in when you're first starting out with figure drawing, portrait painting, and um, you know doing live models or working for magazines, photographs, your, your iPhone, iPad, home computer, TV, whatever it is you're working from. These principles I'm going to show you here right now are going to be like your fundamentals of doing the figure, the portrait, the human form. And uh, there's other theories you can, methods and theories you can also learn too. But if you're going to learn these, these are kind of the classic ones that you'll see everybody working with when you go to a studio and you're studying with live models and you're studying with other artists. You'll definitely, anytime I've worked with um, in a professional studio setting, um, this is the way most all artists will work. Some might not do as much scaling because maybe they're more advanced and they don't really maybe have to do as much scaling with their models the way I'm going to do it, but I still am learning a lot with the figure, with doing portraits in the figure, the human form. So I always have to 
just make sure I'm scaling things correctly. So we'll get into that in detail in just a minute. I just want to take a quick break and then um, we'll get right back into it and I'll grab a few more um, things that I want to introduce here to this uh, video, a few more props, let's say, and then um, we'll get started. All right, so we're getting back now and um, this, is, this is a portrait I did, a figure painting, probably about a year ago. And um, I copied it out of a book. It's basically um, a model seated position man with um, frontal uh, position here. So the head is in a frontal position. Um, and basically we can use this as our idea of scaling our, our model. So I'll use a Sharpie here so we can kind of get an, an idea of what we're thinking about. So let's say you have, um, you're working from a picture or a book, like an art book or a photograph from a magazine or a um, something on your iPhone or iPad. All you have to remember is your idea is to um, take one part of the human form and if we're doing portrait work or, you know, a seated, a model, something to this effect, all we have to do is um, we have to say, okay, we have the, let's say this is the photograph, so we're going to pretend this is a photograph here or a picture or our iPhone, and you have the model or the, the portrait you're working with, and then you say, okay, here's the, the model. And they're in a seated pose here, so let's just pretend they're like this. And uh, this is the um, the model here. Okay. What we want to do is we want to make sure that our model we're drawing the proportions correctly for for the body and the head and the legs when we're, we're, we're drawing this. So you might notice, okay, the head is here. How many heads is it down to the seat? Approximately the seat is about here to the model. Should be about four. Let's take a look and see. Maybe we can change our color. And we say, all right, how much is the head here? down to the seat. One, two, three, four, approximately. So there we have it. Four head lengths, one, two, three, four, is to where the seat of the model is, where they're sitting at the uh, chair or couch or whatever they might be sitting on the floor, so forth. So that's all you have to remember is you just want to scale things and you can use the model's head as your first uh, measuring point. So typically you're always going to find that a model or, you know, a human form, you're usually going to have four heads to the bottom of the seat of a, of a person to, let's say, you know, below the belt buckle. If the person was standing, it would be what one head length probably below the belt line. So if that's the belt line here, here, then your one head length below the belt line would be about the, the approximate seat of, of a person. The buttocks, the glutamus maximus. So um, that's really how we do it. Now to transfer this from a photograph to our picture, we might say, okay, in our picture here in our photograph, we say, oh, the the head is four lengths down to the seat of this figure sitting down. I want to re recreate this painting. Well, now over here, I'm working from a small photograph. Let's say this is like a three inch by a five inch photograph. Well, now I have a canvas or a watercolor paper, and it's a lot larger. All I would do is I would say, all right, preliminary, uh, a preliminary sketch will give me about the... So I would say, okay, I'm going to preliminary sketch this about... The head should be about this big if I want to fit this all in, like so. And that's about correct. Four head lengths like this is going to be this pose here within this larger scale, this larger watercolor paper. So then all I would do is say, okay, I would look across from me and say, put my thumb, my thumb looking across from me, or we could take this and say, all right, this is, this is our 
one head length is this black tip on this pencil. So let me come over here and say, okay, well that's the black tip. Well, let's use the black tip over here and say how many black tips to the seat? One, two, three, and four. So we have four head lengths down to the seat. So whatever I do, I just take this and say, okay, that's one head length up here. I notice that if I put my head up here in this size, it's going to fit pretty well here. And then we just take this and go, okay. Now we just use our pencil this way and say, well, let's use a new scale. One head length up here times four. One, two. I shift down and put my finger on the paper and say that's second hash mark. Then I say, okay, let's just make sure again. Tip of my finger on the pencil where the one head length is. I go down, two, three. And then I just transfer my finger down to the paper to get my hash mark there. And I wouldn't do it. I'm doing it dark so you can see it. And then the final head length, again, we go up to the top. You don't have to do that. You can just keep your hand on the pencil the whole time if you want. But to transfer your finger down, you know, you have to lift your finger off the pencil. So one, two head lengths. One, two, three. Hash mark. And then again, go up to the top, to the head length up here. Put your pointer finger on your pencil. Go down to the next hash mark, down to this one here. Put your finger down onto the paper right where the your finger is and there you have it. So you have the legs, you have the legs here, seat is under here, and you have your three head lengths and you have your head up here, your shoulders come down and then you can also figure on how wide are the shoulders. Shoulders are usually the width of a head for males, for men. So if you go with your head here and you put your put your pointer finger on your pencil like this and say, okay, that's one width of the head. Then you just move it down here to the shoulder area and say, all right, where's that line? About there. One head width is the shoulder. And then we do it again. Put our finger there for the width of the head. Bring our pencil down here and say, that's about the edge of the head over here where the ear is and the side of the head. And then we just put our finger down right where the my other finger is on the pencil here, and that's where the other shoulder is, like that. Move it in, and that's fine. So that's how we scale things. And basically, when you're scaling things, you're just remembering that you're just using these as references. So you're using this head here as a reference, and you're saying, okay, this is my photograph. How many heads here to the bottom of the seat? One, two, three, approximately four. That gives you the seat of the model. And then over here you can notice this paper is a lot larger. We're using watercolor paper here. So now we're going to draw our head larger up here in this painting. So now we got to start a new scale, but we know once we make our head here, that's our new scale. And then we just do the same thing. Put our finger down here and say, okay, we said here four head lengths to the seat. And we just go one, two, three, and four. And my pointer finger is holding the scale from the top of the pencil to that location, which is the head length right there that we're using. And then we said the head length for the width is here. So we do that and say, okay, there's the width of the head. The shoulder should be as wide as one head width for males. So there we go. One head width. And then the same thing here, starting in. One head width is there. Slide this over this way and say, okay, that's the side of the head. One head length one, one head width to the side is the other shoulder here. And there we have it. You make sure you have a neck on our model here. So just slope down. So these are things you know you can kind of say, oh, I need to I need to make the neck a little more here pronounced and bring it down a little bit and then the shoulders flow from there. So you know you have to so, and that's perfect reason why we do a light sketch first and then we can erase some of the other lines. And I'm doing a lot of sketchiness to this, but you'll notice when we do the when we do our drawing of this cowboy we're going to do, you're not going to see me do as many of these sketch lines because here I'm just sketching out ideas so we can kind of go over it together and you can kind of see like how I'm doing everything and formulating all of my methods here and to get my figure going and get it drawn nicely with, with some pencil lines. And that's really it. But that's really the kind of basics of it. And we're going to go over this more. And I also wanted to mention, I'm actually going to start a Patreon channel. 
And what I'm going to do is on Patreon, I'm going to do nothing but figure work, portrait work, figures. Um, maybe I'll do some, uh, maybe some animal paintings, things like that, but mostly the human form. I want to do the portraits and the figure uh, on my Patreon channel. I'm going to have it as a very humble cost to join, maybe $5 a month. So anyone that wants to come by and work on figures all the time, I'll try to upload maybe two or three videos per month. And if you're just joining along for $5 a month, you'll have at least three really good videos I'll create doing the figure, portraits, females, males. We're going to do every type of you know figure you can imagine. We'll do interesting things like cowboys, Indians. We'll do, you know, just fun, everyday stuff, you know, offbeat type of things. Um, models. We'll do maybe some famous people, presidents, uh, maybe great uh, dignitaries and princes and princesses from other countries and all these cool things like that. We'll do a lot of that kind of fun stuff doing figure work. The only thing is most people on our YouTube channel don't really like to do figure work that much. As much as I've done figure work over the years, the last five years on YouTube, not many people watch my figure painting and drawing uh, tutorials on YouTube and on, on, you know, on YouTube. So that's why I'm thinking I'll go over and I'll do something on Patreon and then it'll be kind of like our own private little, you know, uh, club where we're going to do nothing but figure work. We'll have fun. And again, uh, I'm trying to make it as an artist. I need um, funds are always important for me to try to keep um, purchasing my paper, my paints to keep myself going as an artist to bring in money. I need upgrades to my camera for you, YouTube, of course, and microphones and all the different things it takes. It's internet access. There's a lot of costs that go into doing YouTube and so forth. So I'm just mentioning it because you know, I know some of you probably want to do the figure and I probably don't do enough for you, you know, to enjoy that part of uh, drawing and painting and watercolor. So I'm going to dedicate my um, Patreon channel on Patreon to figure work. So I hope you'll join along there and uh, sign up. And again, it's a big support for me as an artist. So I'm hoping many of you will uh, come on board and watch um, uh, the videos and tutorials there that we're going to do. And this will be something of what, this will be the style and the the methods and the techniques we're going to use uh, on my Patreon channel here. But again, uh, most people don't want to see a lot of um, figure work on my regular YouTube channel here. So on YouTube, we have so many people here and thank you so much for coming by on a constant basis and we have a wonderful time here doing all kinds of subject matter. But I'm just going to kick it up a notch and maybe have a little side uh, hustle on um, Patreon. So I'm still going to be making all my regular YouTube videos as always, I'm just going to have an extra channel on Patreon, which you can go to, too, as well. And again, um, it's up to you if you want to join that. It'll be all figure work and portraits and things like that. And we'll be doing things like this uh, on this channel. So um, we'll get right back to it. We're going to start our uh, pencil drawing next of a cowboy. And um, we'll begin in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're going to get started now, and um, this is more of a um, pretty bright colors we have on this painting. So this is, uh, uh, the flesh tones are a little more, you know, uh, colorful with some reds, burnt siennas, you know, I use some nice uh, raw sienna, some cadmium red. I did a lot of uh, interesting uh, coloration in this one, again, painting from a photograph, and I am going to... This painting we're going to do, we're going to just keep it a little more um, monochromatic, not as much color. We will add warm and cool everywhere. It's just maybe we won't use just as much, but you'll see. It's going to be really a lot of fun. Let's get started with the pencil drawing. And again, I'm going to use the same method we just did um, here in this painting. So uh, I'm going to pretty much, I'd like to use the full size of my paper. Let me see how many head lengths. So now what I'm going to do is I'm working from a photograph across from me. Can't really show it, honestly, because um, copyright issues. Uh, a lot of great photography out there and, and uh, paintings and so forth. Um, it's just uh, sometimes people are very personal with their artwork and they don't want it, uh, people to use it for whatever reason. Um, but in any case, we'll, we'll cover at the beginning. Once we get finished with our painting here and our drawing and our painting, we'll go back to the beginning and we'll cover uh, how I scaled it from the um, photograph I'm using. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to have my thumb. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it on the photograph in front of me. 
and say, okay, one head length is basically from the tip of the pencil to the bottom of the metal clip. So this might work out good. Tip of the pencil to the bottom of the metal clip. And I might also wonder, let me see how big this would be. If I put my pencil up there, one plus about there. All right, so this is one plus about another. Yeah, that's going to work. So what, what happens is here, I'm working from ra a rather large photograph online, uh, zoomed in on my computer. And what I can do is when I scale it, I can use the same scale on my computer screen and transfer that same scale down. So what I'm saying is I don't have to adjust anything over here. The way I previously, you know, previously showed, you know, just a second ago, we kind of showed how if you want to make something from a smaller photograph to a larger piece of watercolor paper, you can do that. You just have to adjust your scale. And once you start with your um, head, then you go from your head and you use that head measurement for all the rest of the shoulders, the head down to the seat. So here, what I'm saying is I'm going to use the same exact scale. So I'm just going to take my scale here and say, okay, the head is from tip of this pencil here to the bottom of this metal clip. So I'm going to go here and uh, we'll see how that works. So we have that. And this figure has a hat, so I'm going to do this. And I'm actually... I might make it a little bit smaller, but not, not that much smaller. And I might make it a little bit over here to the left. So I'm going to say over here, I'm going to make my head there. Light sketch. You can probably barely see it here. And I'll go over this with a darker pencil line. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting in the rough sketch of what I want to do here. Then I'm going to make the neck down here. And again, the shoulders are going to be the width of the head, like this, width of the head. So I'll take this here and say that's the width of the head here, go down over here, there, shoulder. sloped more. This one's up a little bit more. Now I'm going to figure out, <clears throat> let's see, now I'm going to start thinking about, let me get the hat. This cowboy has a hat. Let's take the head and make our, I'm going to make a quick, I'm going to figure out my quick dimensions of my head, my eye sockets, my nose, my mouth. Then from there, I'm going to see where the hat is here. So there's some hair here. There's, the hat comes across up here about. So about the close to the top of his head, his hat. So I'm just kind of talking my way through this. All right, now the brim of his hat is almost to the, to the edge of his shoulders like this. And it comes down like this, almost to where his mouth is. And then this up here. And this also comes out about to his shoulder, across here, and then a little bit wider than his head is the top of the hat, like this. Like that. Okay, so now we have the hat. And again, I'll draw this darker, everybody. I'm just doing a preliminary sketch, and I'm talking myself through this here. So then here we're going to have the shoulders. Let me see if I can turn down these lights a little bit. Okay, that might be a little better. The only problem is my light blinks when I turn it down really low. That's not good. I'm going to have to figure out a solution to that issue. I might have to put a filter on my light or something. I don't know. But I'm sure that is not good for viewing. Okay. 
Okay, so now I made some very dark lines for the shoulders, so I'm just lifting that up a little bit, soften it. And then, um, okay, we got the shirt coming out this way. He's got a vest on. Next thing I want to do is I want to get my location for um, let me say let me go f let's say for the seat and it should be four head legs one two three four okay so that should be four head legs to the seat approximately there and then here I want to see how many head legs down to his elbow his elbow was resting on a chair so let's go down how many head lengths to the, I'll go across here and look at the picture and say one, two, three. So three head lengths down to his elbow, which is resting on the chair over here on the left side, his, his left side or right side. One, two, one, two, three. All right, so his elbow's here. He's got a... His elbow's there, and then his knee is over here. So now I have his knee, which is a bit up from there. And then how about from here? So from his vest down is his knee. So I'll just make sure that his knee comes up about there. And then his knee comes across. His lower leg comes across the picture. Now I'm going to say... His other elbow is a little lower on this side, so I kind of can look across and say, all right, his other elbow is a little lower over here. Um, he has his vest on here, so we have his vest here, like so. He's got some playing cards here, and then he has the shirt, like this, so. Still a little bit lower there, and then... His vest here is where his sleeve is here, and then his hand comes up, like so. And then his hand is there. And again, I'll go over this darker. I'm just, you can kind of hear I'm talking through this here, figuring out lines. Okay, his vest over here on this side is in line with his cuff of his sleeve, where his hand comes out from his... Uh, his shirt and then his hand comes across and then he's actually holding some playing cards here. So we have those. And I'm just getting things approximately located. We can kind of scale things and say how big is his hand. So his hand is about the same size as this here. I made his hand a little bit small. That's one thing you'll notice as an artist when you're doing figure work. We always tend to make hands a little bit smaller because they are, um, they do look, you know, small on the, on the body. Tend, you know, the hands tend to look a little small compared to all the rest of the body parts. So. I think all artists, not all, you know, it's, um, that happens frequently. Hands usually get uh, drawn in and painted a little smaller than a lot of times what, what they are actually in reality. Just kind of a general idea of sometimes what happens when drawing the figure and hands and so forth. So his leg comes over here. The bottom of his cuff of his pants is about here. So we're going to do his pants here, and his leg curves right down like so. And we can actually go a little larger to give ourselves a little bit more dynamics. You can make the legs a little bit larger in the shoes to kind of give us more of depth perception here, some more three-dimensional quality. So I will take some liberties and maybe make things a little bit larger. Like that. 
so that's his uh, boot there and his leg, lower leg. And then his other uh, bottom of his chair is right about here. The bottom of the seat is here. And there's a chair here. And it's dark down here, so we're just going to leave that dark under here. And then over here, the chair comes down like so across. And then down here like so. And then there's the leg of the chair there. Okay, so we'll just capture a little bit of that. Okay, so right now we have the chair, his legs. Um, we have to get his other leg here, which is right there. So creases in the pants, and then we have his boot here. Like so. All right, we're going to go over this with a darker pencil drawing, and I'll kind of talk it through one more time. Um, I would say that I'm going to make his, again, his, his, his shoes maybe a little larger just to Give us a little more depth perception here, a little more three-dimensional feel. We'll make it as if his legs are a little larger. And then his body's a little bit smaller going back this way. And I think we have that pretty much looking okay. Okay. Then we have to work on his, uh, one more thing, let's work on his left arm here, so it comes up from here, and then about here is his sleeve, and then he has a gun, so he's sort of he's got a gun here, and we're just going to have it Got the barrel here. All right, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, Perfect time to take a break once you get through your um, first uh, preliminary sketch, where you get everything kind of on your paper where you like it. You can make some erase, you know, you can erase a little and adjust things a bit if you like to. And as you can see, I think I did did a little bit of erasing. Um, there's a there's a part of the couch chair, I should say here, which is right underneath his elbow. that. Okay, and always remember, your drawings, your pencil drawings are always going to look a little bit funny, a little bit odd sometimes. Once you start painting, you'll notice that everything looks much better. So don't ever uh, get, get worried about getting things uh, perfect when you do your sketches. Just get in the basics of your drawing. Then once you start painting things, you're going to see that it comes alive. The painting comes alive. The figure becomes much more realistic and you know you'll see the beauty of the paint and the colors it'll look so much better so don't worry about it uh, 
drawings sometimes do look a little bit odd and strange or uh, they look like they may have more problems than you think. That's what I want to say is so don't keep erasing. Just go with your gut instincts of getting in the drawing at first, your preliminary sketch first, and then you will do a darker drawing over the top of this, okay? And if your preliminary sketch looks good, you might not need to go over with a darker pencil line, but I will go over with a darker pencil line just so you kind of see how I've done everything and I'll walk through again the steps of how I scale things and um, worked everything out to go through this, okay? So I'll be right back. I'll take another break just to relax for a few minutes, maybe five, ten minutes, and then I'll come back and we'll just work on this composition and have a fun time doing it. Uh, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Okay, here we go. Again, I'm going to do some really um, darker sketch lines now, some drawing lines here, just so you can see how I created this. <clears throat> and <coughs> excuse me. Um, if you do your first preliminary sketch with lighter pencil lines and not as dark as I'm using, then that, that's fine. You can just use those and, and paint in your painting after that point. But I am going to go with a darker line just so, one, um, you'll see it better, my drawing. Two, you'll hear me go over the steps one more time of how I'm thinking when I'm... So I'm just going to talk out loud, basically, and you can just hear me talking out loud as I'm going, as I'm working things out, as I go right through the drawing. I start at the head, and again, I scaled my head here, and I noticed that it was from the picture across from me. It's basically the same as my drawing on the paper. So my painting is going to end up the same size as the uh, picture on my screen, uh, on my computer, or a magazine, or whatever it is. It'll be the same scale. So if I hold it up next to it, it's going to look exactly the same. Okay, so, and then I say, how many head lengths to the seat of this uh, cowboy? One, chin, so the chin down, another head length, two. I make a little hash mark there happens to be where his wrist is. Uh, three, uh, again, one, two, three. Right about there, three head lengths, and then one more. We'll go up to the top. Head length, one, two, three, four. Right there. And that's about his seat. I might have went a little bit lower. That's fine, too. Again, we wanted to say that <clears throat> to gain a little more uh, three-dimensional quality in this drawing and painting I'm doing, I'm sort of making his head, I'm going to keep his head, let's say, to scale with the photograph I'm working from, but then as I come out closer to me, let's say I'm a, let's say I'm a camera or I'm like pretending I'm a photographer or, or I'm looking at it as I'm a, my, uh, my eyesight is like a camera, I want to make his legs maybe larger than what the scale is because that'll give me a little extra artist liberty to make his body seem like it's three-dimensional, like I'm closer to his legs, and then as his body is further away in the chair, he gets a little smaller. So I guess I'm kind of distorting the figure uh, in an essence, a little bit, just a little bit though, not too much. So you have to be careful doing stuff like this, you know, <clears throat> but that comes into uh, just practicing and getting the hang of it. So. We already we have a seat down here. Um, he, he's sitting in a chair, so we have the chair there. All right, so now we're working with the head. We will, we'll start with the head and say, okay, now we have his head. It's an oval. Let's split the head in half, and then I just made his eye sockets here, and the bottom of his nose is halfway down to his chin, and then his lips in between his bottom of his nose and his chin. And again, I'm just putting in indications of the bottom of the nose, the lips, and the eye sockets. We're going to paint this, not really so much draw in everything. You know, he's got some eyeballs here. We'll put in some of his iris and just so we have that in there. But we know we're going to do more of the details with our brush and paint. And then at the top of the eyes, the ears. So we'll just have a little bit of his ears here. And then he's got his large brim cowboy hat on. So that we have. So we draw that in. And I just look and say, how wide is his cowboy hat? Well, I can just take a line and say his vest. He has a vest on here, a dark vest, like so. That vest, 
at his shoulder is about right where the um, cowboy hat brim is, the edge of the brim. So I'm good. I'm right about there. How about over here? Same thing. I'm looking over at my photograph. Yes, same thing. Edge of the brim of his hat here at its widest point is about his shoulder. And there I have that other uh, reference point here that is for his shoulder. <clears throat> and his uh, vest, his dark vest. He's got a dark brown vest on it, looks like. Okay, so now we're going to say uh, shoulders are the width of his head. Well, we kind of figured that his hat was where his vest is, so we just drop those lines straight down and say, okay, we have his shoulders now because it's the same as his hat. And his shoulders were basically uh, one width of the head over is the shoulder from the side of the head over here to this way is the shoulder. And you do that the same for this side. Okay, now I look and I say, okay, where, where am I going to go next with my drawing? I, I, I think the next thing we tried to get was his elbow over here, his left elbow, which is right side of our picture. So I said, his elbow, how many head lengths down to his elbow? And we figured it was three. Let's just make sure again. One, two, three. And yeah, three is right there, bottom of the elbow. So once we have the bottom of his elbow, we look in the picture and we say, wow, how far out is his elbow on this chair with his shirt and his elbow here and his uh, arm? Well, let's take a look. In the picture, I'm going to hold up my pencil and say, okay, the width of his head is actually the black part of, approximately, the black part of this uh, pencil. So how many head lengths over to his elbow? One, two, three. So three head lengths here, approximately, three head lengths over to his elbow, end of his elbow. One, two, and I'm keeping an eye on where my pointer finger is so that I just slide over to the next there and it's about yeah about that much perfect so all I'm doing is just going around the painting again in the, or drawing and scaling everything from the head length starting with the head length width and height of head length and then just take that dimension and then just have your pencil and you're just kind of going down and using your picture first go into your Going to your reference photo first, or your model, if you're working from a model, or a reference photo, or your iPhone, iPad, home computer, you're just holding it up, your pencil up to the screen, or what, the photograph, noticing with your thumb where the head length is on you, with your thumb, then you come down here and say, well, I already drew this head a little bigger, let's say, well, no big deal, you just say, all right, there's our head length on this drawing that we're doing because we created our own head length first. And we go over here and we say, well, the head length is about maybe a little bit less. Well, that's okay. We're using this head length. So you use this one up here on your photograph and you, you go around your photograph and do the same thing. You keep that same position with your thumb on the pencil and you just go around and whatever you got to scale, that's fine. Then you say, oh yeah, <clears throat> uh, where is his, uh, where's his boot next? Let's go to the boot. Over here, how far over is this boot in the picture in relation to our uh, reference photo? Well, I'm, I'm going to take a look over here and I'm going to say, okay, one, two, three and a half. So three and a half head lengths is his boot. So we say that's one head length width and we'll go three and a half times. One, two, three and a half. So that's good. Half was about here. So that's correct. Okay, so we got the elbow here, and then we could do our chair. We do, we'll go down with the chair, and we'll look, and we'll say, yeah, the chair is about bottom of where this, his seat is, which is about here, seat of his, his uh, pants. And then we, next, what did we say we wanted to get? Um, we're going to try to get his uh, left elbow, and there's a chair over here, too, like that, a cushion for the chair. That actually might be, yeah, that's about, I think that's the cushion for the chair over there. Anyway, uh, let's see. One head length. 
his hand actually, his hand is approximately a little bit in from the brim of his hat. So from the brim of his hat straight down should be his hand. And it is, that's where his hand starts. So that looks good. Okay, then. Then we figured um, how many head lengths down from his cuff of his pants here, that's resting upon his knee here, is the bottom of his boot. Let's see. I'll do it again. I'll look at my picture and I'll scale it from my picture over here. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I made it a little larger, his leg, again, to make it a little more three-dimensional, uh, using like the foreshortening idea of just trying to make it a little bit larger, closer to us, and then farther back where his shoulders and his head are. So that looks good. So that's basically how we did it. We just I just went over with the darker pencil line, and we can contour draw this now. So that's kind of... And then if you contour draw, it's just a matter of you can go right around the picture. I might shade in the bottom of his boot there, just to so I have that reference of a little bit of darker tone there, tonal value. And then there's the chair here. And I'm just going to go right around the picture, contour drawing everything. And so you can kind of just see. <clears throat> trying to just get the, the basics of everything, where everything is. Some areas you're going to blend in. Some areas are not going to blend in so much like his vest is very dark. It's like a dark brown vest he has on. So that's not going to, that's going to kind of pop a little bit. Same with his hat. Underneath his hat the shadow is going to pop. It's going to be really dark under here. So there's going to be areas we have a lot of darks. Areas where we're going to have middle tones, where it's not too dark, and then other areas it's going to be light. We're going to try to kind of keep everything looking good with our tonal values. But I think that this looks pretty good. And that's basically the drawing of it. And again, um, not too much detail. Let's keep the details minimal. He has a mustache, so I'm going to put that mustache on like so. And uh, that looks pretty good. A little bit of eyebrows there, and I think the rest is going to look fine. He's got some hair over here on the that side there, a little bit by the hat. The hat's pretty dark. So the hat, underneath his hat, quite a bit of dark, darks. And then it gets a little lighter up through here, and then it's lighter on top. So that's about all we'll do now for the um, drawing. And we'll get the rest in with our paint. So I hope you're enjoying this. We're having a lot of fun here. Um, again, we're, the, the main thing is having fun while you're learning all the fundamentals and that takes, unfortunately it does take quite a bit of time to learn the fundamentals of watercolor and especially drawing with the figure, the human form, the portrait, um, doing all the different things that uh, it requires, takes some time, takes some practice. So think of it as like a couple of years you're going to have to practice these fundamentals and basics until you really get used to them. It doesn't come overnight, so the thing is you have fun with it, you don't get frustrated. Be happy with any small victories you have with your drawings and your paintings when you're doing the portrait and the figure. Just, you know, hey, if the vest comes out great and that's the only thing that comes out great, well, fine. Be happy with the vest, 
looks fantastic. It might come out perfect. And then, you know, maybe his boots and his pants don't come out so good or maybe his hat comes out really good and maybe uh, there's a problem with his uh, facial features or whatever. Don't worry about it. Again, it takes quite a while to learn the figure, the human form. Take your time, have fun with it. And again, just enjoy whatever comes out good. Great. Just finish the painting through. Uh, start it and keep going and just work it all the way through. If you have a few spots that come out good, well then, hey, it's great. You, you did a great boot and a great vest and a great hat. Maybe you had problems with the hands or whatever. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. It's just practicing over and over. And always remember, as you're going through each painting, you're remembering and you'll be able to recall. Uh, you'll be able to recall things uh, in much more quicker demand when you're actually doing it the next time. So each time you do an exercise or a composition like this, you'll remember what you did the next time, most of it or some of it. And then the next time you do it, and it'll just keep compounding. Just like interest uh, in the bank account. If you have some money in the bank and you just leave it there and it's getting 5% interest, you know, after a while it just keeps adding up and adding up. And the next thing you know, your money might have doubled over five years, let's say, or what have you. So all those things that you learn on a constant basis doing the compositions and these paintings absolutely will lead up to much more, uh, you know, uh, mastery of the figure. So let's keep moving, keep going. We'll do some more um, painting now and we'll get this going and we're going to have a fun time painting this. You're going to see a lot of fun colors and good stuff going on. All right, now begins the fun. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. Okay, and we'll start with the uh, the, the head and the and the uh, hat. So first colors, I'm gonna keep it simple. Flesh tones, um, cadmium red, uh, yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'll get a little bit of a light color going here and I'll try to I'll try to start here and just kind of get just get a light wash on first. He's got a, a shirt of some sort. Um, so I'll just paint my flesh tone right down to the, the collar of the shirt like that. And there we go. We have our first uh, flesh tone on there. Notice I didn't lift up the brush. I tried to keep the brush on the paper at all times. And there's a time when you can go in and add a little more color quickly. You could add a little shadow, a little bit of uh, a little bit of cerulean blue. It has to be done super quick though, like that on the sides. It has to be done extremely fast because. And that's if you have, I have Fabriano paper here, which is very user friendly. So you can go in and do a little bit of added, <clears throat> maybe that of cerulean blue on the sides of the head for a little bit of shadow. And you can go in there and add that like I did. But if you were using something maybe less quality paper, it probably won't be possible to do that because it'll wind up making very um, unpleasant looking marks on the paper. So the, the better your paper is, the uh, more time you have to work on it and add in subsequent washes when you're working like sort of on wet paper. So that's really the the um, the way it kind of works. The better paper just gives you more time to work. So now I've added some French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and uh, some burnt sienna. My three like major darks there, right in this area. And I'll start to go in and get some of the darker darks here under the brim of the hat, like so. And it's quite dark here along the bottom of the brim of the hat this way. So I'm just working the darks here of, of the underside of the brim of the hat. I'm trying to look and see. It goes pretty much here. And then 
I stay away from the paint, uh, the paint of the face that we just created because that'll wind up running into the um, face color, the brown of the hat, the dark underside. So let's just recall that, um, I'll add a little cerulean blue too here to the shadow areas. So we have a little bit of blue in there too, some cool blue, some blue in there. Maybe a little bit of blue sky color, just a little bit of sky color to blend in here. Just, I'll just add that little bit of blue, cerulean blue sky color just to get a little bit of a tie into the hat area so that it doesn't just look const completely cut out and pasted on there. I can even do a little bit up here too. And then uh, his hat is kind of like a this hat is a uh, raw umber with a little bit of the flesh tone too. We'll kind of do a flesh tone here. And the light's coming from the, from this side of the picture this way. Let's make our light insignia. So we have it. So the light's coming from here, from this side. And you can see already some of that brown leaked into where his eye socket is. And, and that, he has quite a bit of hair, so this cowboy actually has a lot of hair on his uh, forehead. So that's going to be okay, but I just wanted to sort of catch that before it goes too far down into the face. But that should be okay. The rest looks good. And I want to make sure this looks straight here. Like that. Looks a little better. And he has some hair over here. <clears throat> so that's looking pretty good. I, again, I added some shadow over here on the left side of his right side of his hat, or our left here. Light's coming from here. So there's gonna be a little more shadow over here. But let's keep working. Let's uh, his vest. And again, burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And we're going to try to keep our dark darks like that. And we're going to get uh, get his vest, part of his vest, working here. And you know, you'll notice I'll, I'll work around the painting so that we can keep going. So that's his vest here, and then there's the playing cards are right uh, below the, the vest here. You can see his playing cards in his hand here. So I leave the vest there. Maybe I add a little bit of darker blue there, maybe for a little bit of a darker dark. And then over here, let's do the same thing. Pick up some darker dark and some cerulean blue. So I'll try to mix in some, I'll dry off my brush after I rinse it on some tissue and then I'll try to keep it a little lighter over here, like that. Okay, I'm kind of going with the darks first, you can kind of see. Um, that tends to work out good if you're doing the a la prima method, and that's what we're doing here, pretty much the a la prima method. There's some dark right in here, where his vest is. And then there's some flesh tones, uh, again, cadmium red, a little bit of burnt sienna, yellow ochre. 
And he's got a little bit of a shadow under there, flesh tone there. So that would be the shadow underneath his wrist. And then I'll so see if I can kind of work that up like that. So I'm just taking that darker flesh tone and just trying to work it, work it up into his hand over here. Like so. We'll keep it light. And then he has a shirt on, so. His shirt's about over here. Like that. And then his uh, fingers over here. And I'll leave I'll leave some of this to dry and then I can always go over that later. And then there's some, uh, there's some shadows here. So I'll use a little bit of uh, cerulean blue and uh, raw umber just for a little bit of a shadow on his shirt there. I blot up a little bit maybe. And there's another bit of shadow there. Here there's another bit of shadow. And if you have to, maybe sometimes you can blot a little bit with the tissue if you find you've made too much of a shadow, like Sometimes you might add too much shadow in an area. You can always lift off with your um, tissue and then you can just continue on. And uh, there's more shadow under here. So I'm just trying to work out a few shadows, get those in, let things dry over there on the other side of the painting. So you can kind of see we're making good progress here. We're going with the darks here first. There's some green. Let's, I'm going to get this green here. All right, let's take a quick break and uh, we'll be back in a second. Let's let some stuff set up here on the page. Okay, so we're continuing on here and we're actually making good progress. We're getting in some of our darkest darks and then our uh, medium shadows here and there, so let's continue on here. Um, I'll try to get some shadowing in there. And then uh, we have... I'm going to go with a maybe a cerulean blue. Uh, or I should say French ultramarine blue. for this couch here. I'll try to keep uh, the color scheme a little bit more simple. So we have a, a dark dark there. So let's go straight in. Straight paint, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And then we'll just darken that up a bit. And that's sort of the darker dark of the bottom of the arm of the couch. And then there's a bit of a shadow over here, so I'm trying to just work around the painting. And uh, I do notice there's a shadow over here, burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, French ultramarine blue. I'll try to keep maybe the color scheme kind of simple here so we're not really and 
and then it's a little bit lighter here and then it gets a little darker over here so I'll leave a little bit of a white space there just to do that like this maybe I'll get some flesh tone too put some flesh tone into our color scheme here our color washes this way it's uh, it harmonizes nice the whole painting all together and uh, let's see we have a darker dark down here maybe some burnt umber this is the leg of the chair so we can do that like that there and then we'll let that set up and we'll do the lighter wash on the other side of the the leg of the chair and there's another leg back here that's in shadow and we'll just keep working around the painting so I see some more there's a little bit of a shadow there and there was a little bit of a shadow there too as well so we're just doing some details here as we go and there's a little bit of a dark spot there let's try to do some let's do some eye sockets here so let's do the eye sockets a little bit darker like so almost like sunglasses and then his the bridge of his nose over here so I'm going to put some of that there let me zoom in just a little more so you can kind of see how I'm doing his face here so now I'm going in with some darks um, I'm looking at the um, my reference photo and I'm going to try to just carefully get in the uh, dark darks here so let me make some dark darks French ultramarine blue burnt umber burnt sienna again we're mixing that same uh, trifecta of colors to get our darkest darks and he's got some hair kind of on the top of his forehead here so I'm going to get that hairline in there and then his ears over here so I'm going to leave a little bit of the ear there Maybe I'll add a little bit of red to his ear, maybe some burnt sienna, just to get a little bit of that color in there. Maybe a little bit of cad red. Let's try some cadmium red. Okay, we need a little bit of a spritz here for our reds. I can see my cadmium red is getting a little depleted. I need to add a little more there, but I want to get some of that cadmium red just by his ear for some warmth by the ear there. <clears throat> and that'll mellow out as it dries. And uh, what else? Let's see. Let's keep working the flesh tones a little bit here. I want to try to get his a uh, little bit more, develop a little more uh, there's a bit of a shadow there on his cheek. And I'll try to bring that down like so. There's a little bit of his hair over here, so I want to capture that. And then uh, the same over here. We have some hair coming down this way here. So those are the dark darks there, the hair. And uh, maybe I went a little too close with the hair on the cheek, so you can lift up a little bit if you have to. And um, there is some more, there's some more red there, some more red, some for his cheek. And then I just try to blend that in nice and easy right around there, like so. And then maybe a little more of a shadow under here, like that. And if you have a problem with some, um, if you happen to uh, smudge some stuff, you know, 
Maybe you can just add a little wash there to this. So I always try to not worry about stuff if you get a little bit of a problem with smudging or you lean into some of your paint, you can sort of just smooth out some spots maybe. So we're still working on the face here and the uh, shadows. I'm trying to darken up a few spots there. And again, you almost have to really be mm, careful as you work to uh, let's get the mustache in here. So burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Burn more burnt umber there. Let's try to get the mustache in too. Okay, so we get the mustache in there. Um, we could make the eyes a little darker. Um, couple nostrils there, a little touch of nostrils. Smooth out this wash here under the neck a little bit. And then his chin has a bit of a shadow there. And I think that looks pretty good. You can, you can notice uh, less is more. Trying to do less is better than doing too much. So you can kind of see I just got a basic shadow pattern of getting a little bit of the darks in the eye sockets and then taking that shadow, running it down along the bridge of the nose over here on the left, getting some cheekbone uh, definition with some shadows under the cheekbone. And again, we'll look at this in closer detail at the end of the video. We'll, we'll come back and just kind of we'll go through step by step through the painting <clears throat> and just kind of show what we kind of did, how we were thinking as we were going through the painting. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's keep working now. I'm probably going to step up to a different size brush. I think, uh, let me, this was a four uh, travel brush, Da Vinci Maestro travel brush. I'll bump it up to a six Raphael brush like this, round brush, Kalinsky Sable, Kalinsky Sable. And we're going to change out the water, fresh clean water. And at this point we're in pretty good shape. We have the details of the, of the face. And I try to just scratch in a couple hair type shapes in there. So we kind of can see the hair. Like that. Okay, so I'm gonna, again, leave less is more. Don't try to do too much to the facial features. Try to just capture what you're seeing from your photograph, your painting that you're working from. Of course, you're gonna work from my painting. And uh, that'll just be a, an easier way to go because you're watching me do this painting anyway. So you're used to looking at it and watching me do this, and then when you go in to do it and paint it, you're going to have a lot easier time because you already have seen it one time, and now you're a little bit more familiar with it. So I'll do a couple splashes, and again, this is a composition. We're having fun. We're not trying to, uh, you know, make things too uh, fancy or, you know, trying to create perfection here. Okay, so uh, maybe we might have some purple mountains in the background here just for fun. Let's do that. Some purple. French ultramarine violet. This is where we can get a little creative and maybe we're going to have some purple mountains in the background here.
Then a little bit of green for some grass along there. Now once you do this with the purple, best off, take some purple and just add it very lightly. Just put it in a couple spots quickly and, uh, you know, we're doing it kind of sneakily here. You know, a little bit of purple. And what that'll do is that'll just, it'll create this bit of harmony with this purple mountain we did here. It'll read correctly, it'll look good because we have it uh, in the rest of the painting. Okay, there we go. And then maybe some fields of color over here. Flesh tones, we can use the flesh tones for some, with a little bit of yellow ochre, maybe for some fields over here. So that might be some fields and sand and whatever. We're having a cowboy picture here. Okay, so we're, we're doing really well here. Let's come on this side over here and do the same kind of thing. Just a hint of some yellow ochre and green. Some more sap green um, up this way here. And again, let's leave it real loose looking so we're not We're not trying to, again, create a, uh, you know, a museum painting or anything like that. We're just trying to get a basic concept of uh, the portrait here and this cowboy. And then we have some cerulean blue over here for the sky. Maybe some flesh tones along this area here, like that. So try to keep it unified, everything, the colors. And you can notice I'm not using a lot of colors, right? I'm pretty much keeping my color scheme pretty simple. My blue, predominant blue, is French ultramarine for the darks. For the lighter uh, washes of blue, uh, cerulean blue. Those are the two colors, really, for the blues. A little bit of this purple now we were just introducing to the uh, mountains, the purple mountains in the distance here. So that's um, the only time we're going to really use purple, but we did add that purple here and there to the couch and the, his vest here, the cowboy's vest, maybe a couple spots on the pants. We're going to use a little bit of purple. So we'll reuse uh, all of these colors, but we're not going beyond much of what the same colors we're using all the time. So basically, again, the darks we're using are French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. That's like our darks we used in the vest, the hat area. And then we added a little bit of cerulean blue here and there just to kind of mix that into the picture. And then we used the cerulean blue again for the sky colors. And that's pretty much a little bit of the background color here. And that's, you know, your basic uh, color for the darks. And then a little bit of the sky color with the cerulean blue. And then the flesh tones were cadmium red, a little bit of um, yellow ochre, and a little bit of burnt sienna. So that's our flesh color. And we're just going to continue on. Let's get the hand in down here. So we use a little bit of a darker flesh tone here as we go on the bottom of the hand th this way. And across the uh, back of the hand here. And then we'll get some more flesh tone Cad red, burnt sienna, touch of yellow ochre, and we're going to rinse off the brush, dry off the brush a little bit with a, a paper towel or a tissue, and then we'll just kind of blend up that color. And then here we're going to do the same thing flesh tone colors, lighter flesh tone colors there. And then once this dries a little, here we can add more color down this way. 
That's kind of like our shadowy color. And then from there, we'll add some more darker darks to the like areas where the knuckles are maybe and a little bit where the divisions are in the fingers. But I think we're looking all right there. And he's holding a deck of cards. The cards are like a cerulean blue. So we're just going to do some cerulean blue cards here. Like that. Maybe a little bit of cobalt blue for the other side of the cards over here. And I'm careful to dry off my brush first. The key is not to add too much water as we go. All right, so there we have it. And then we'll get back over to our shirt. Let's use some of that again, raw umber, cerulean blue for some shadowing for the shirt over here. So there's some shadows, there's little bits of um, uh, folds in the in the cowboy's shirt. So we want to kind of capture that. A little bit of blue here shadowing over there. And then we have some more raw umber, cerulean blue. And then we'll just try to capture a few more of those folds in the shirt. There's some more darks under here. And we have another spot up here of shadow. And then we can even add a little darker dark there. So raw umber, touch of burnt uh, sienna to get a little bit darker and then some cerulean blue. And then maybe we can get a couple spots like that, just a little darker that there just to give it a little more dynamics and we have it there we go then we could take some yellow ochre over here some blue and this might just be a little bit of a more of a darker color to contrast this uh, shoulder and, and sleeve over here of this uh, cowboy's shirt. Um, he's got the couch here, so let's French Ultramine Blue, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, a little more blue. So you kind of mix your colors around, you get it just right, you think it looks good, that's fine. And we'll just do this other side to the couch over here. that. Maybe a little bit extra dark there. Then we have light on his boots here. So let's see, he's got some brown boots on here. Maybe some raw umber, burnt sienna, uh, raw, raw umber, cerulean blue. And we can make these maybe some And I'm just going to try to outline these boots a little bit like this. And uh, this here is a little darker there. And that's, and that's mostly lighter. So what we can do is strategically place where you see your darkest darks on your, uh, your painting. So if I see the, my darkest darks here and there, get those darkest darks on. Then I rinse my brush off clean water, uh, dry off a little bit on the tissue, and then you can kind of just smooth out the smooth out the wash upwards so that it looks like it's kind of uh, lit a little bit by the sunlight. So a damp brush is all you need here, like that. And then again, you rinse off your brush in clean water, dry off a little bit of the paint, uh, water I should say, clean water, so you don't have too much water on there, and you use a damp brush and you just dampen that up. And then you might, you know, pick up some flesh tones even too here. So that's a 
burnt sienna, cadmium red, yellow ochre. And you can just add those into this area too, just a little bit, just so it kind of, again, we're harmonizing all the colors. Some blue here. Like that. Okay, that's the boots there. You can add more highlights to the boots if you want. Pants, we're just going to leave simple, maybe. Flesh tone colors. And again, the same thing, we're going to try to get some of these uh, shadows in there. Shadows under here, of course, as they go up. Some pleats in the pants, but we're really kind of, at this point, we are we're kind of losing edges here. You can kind of see I'm trying to make the, the values here. similar so that everything all blends in nicely so this area where his he's see, seated on the couch let's blend that all in and make it sort of all one tonal value so it's kind of free flowing shadow area like that And then let's see what else do we have here. Let's do some more shadowing here. So on this side of his knee, there is some shadows over there. So let's go back with our do uh, darker darks, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. So now we have a good dark there. Maybe I dry off a little bit of that so I don't go too dark. And then we just get some darks in here. And I'm looking to see where there's some darks. There's some darks under here where his boot is, across uh, this part of his knee there. And then there's darker darks over here. So I'm going to try to get those in. And I also noticed that it's, it is, as I've been painting, I've been noticing that the uh, colors, or the light, the light, the light is coming from the side as well as the top or the front coming down over the top almost like the sun is high noon straight up overhead so I'm just trying to get a good wash in there like so some purple let's make some purple in there like that This knee is pretty much in, has got a quite a bit of light. So I'm just going to do a little bit of shadow over here. Maybe over here like so. Like that. And then under here, some dark where the shadow is of the boot. Let's take a bit of French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Again, we're getting that dark, dark under there. Like that. And then as we get that dark, dark there, we can straight paint, no water hardly at all. We get that dark, dark there. And then we pick up some more color like that. And then there's some uh, shadow under here like that. And 
And we'll just, kind of, well, maybe we'll do some dark over there like that. And then we'll do another French Ultramarine Blue Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna. A little bit of green. Then we'll do another dark, dark over here for the leg of the chair like that. A little bit of shadow, purple. And I think that's pretty good. So we went, you know, uh, almost a half an hour here. And you can kind of tell I... I apologize, I did not swing back with, that's why I don't like to zoom in and zoom out with my picture frame here, because I realized I was painting some of that foot and pants and some of the um, furniture here without um, having the camera zoomed out. So my apologies, but again, we're just having fun here. This is basically the figure. Um, cowboy, we can do uh, some more touch-ups on some shadow areas if we want. You'll notice that uh, sometimes if we add a little more detail with shadowing, we can be a little bit uh, better off here. Let's do, he has his gun across there, so let's add a little bit of blue, cobalt blue maybe, for the gun. Give it that metallic look, so we'll just have a little bit of the metallic look for the gun. And then he's got the uh, burnt sienna, burnt sienna, yellow ochre and cadmium red. And we'll just make a little bit of a darker under there for his finger. And over here too is a bit of a shadow like that. And then we could add a little bit of the darker dark here just for a little bit of the knuckles. And then we just try to do a little bit of some enhancement there just to a little more interesting look. And then some shadows along the uh, knuckles here. 